Welcome, friends, to the animation experience at Conservation Station. Since the 1930s, Disney animators have put their pencils to paper in service of the idea that the greatest inspiration often comes from the magic of nature. Walt Disney himself understood the importance of spending time around animals, studying their behavior and personalities in order to create realistic characters and dynamic storylines. This meeting of the human and animal worlds sparked a legacy of storytelling that has shaped our relationship with animals and conservation forever. Today, we invite you to become a part of that legacy as our own Disney artists help you learn to sketch characters inspired by the very animals found here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Get your pencils ready because here comes our animation artist now. Uh, welcome to the animation experience here at Conservation Station. My name is Mike. I'm going to be the artist for this class, sharing with you guys how to draw not one, but two of our classic Disney characters. Yeah, that's right. Two for the price of one. Pretty awesome, huh? So you guys know who we're drawing for the class? You, you don't know. You don't, okay, well, see, it's going to be uh, some of our friends from Pawn Emo, Crush and Squirt. Yeah, the two sea turtles. That'd be a lot of fun. You guys like Crush and Squirt, right? Fans of Crush and Squirt? Righteous! Righteous! Okay, great. We'll be getting to draw him in just a few minutes. Let's make sure we have everything we need. All right. Pencils and papers and lap boards. have all three of those items. Pencil, paper, lap boards. That's very, very important. Next thing is going to be these masks. Yeah, these masks got to be continued to be worn inside here, above the nose, below the chin, filling all the space in between, worn properly for the duration of the class. Since there is no food or beverages inside, no eating or drinking, these got to stay on the entire time. Probably heard it a couple hundred times. You'll probably hear it a few more. And finally, uh, last thing, oh yeah, by the way, are those pencils and papers. If the pencil happens to break, uh, just raise your hand up high. One of my friends will be able to come around the room to help you out getting another pencil. If the board spontaneously combusts, if your paper just happens to warp through a, uh, some kind of a black hole somewhere, you know, what could happen? Who knows? Uh, just raise your hand up and my friends will help you. Uh, if you need to, for any reason to just get towards the exit of the restrooms, it's over there underneath the sign conveniently marked exit. That's where you're going to go. Not over there by the ropes, over there where the exit sign is. My friends can help you with that too. All right, now we need one more thing to help us be able to draw, and that is something to inspire us to be able to draw these characters. Many years ago, Walt would bring live animals into the studio to inspire his artists. We're going to inspire you in a little different way here. Since we are drawing uh, sea turtles, uh, I guess we need to like fill this whole place up with seawater, and then we hold our breath while we draw on our paper underwater as it gets wet, and that doesn't really help work out very well at all. So no, we'll do something else. Uh, we're going to be still cel celebrating uh, Earth Month. That was last month, but we're going to stretch it out just a little bit longer so we can uh, be able to show you a little bit more about what the uh, Disney Conservation Fund does worldwide. Some of you are familiar with the Disney Conservation Fund, but probably did not realize all the things they did to help animals around the world. So take a look to the screen left to right, and let's get inspired! They thrill us. Make us laugh. Uh. Cry. They make us think. She's beautiful. Inspire us. And teach us. Most importantly, they connect us to the world of nature. And right now, more than ever, they need us. Through our efforts here at the park at Disney's Animal Kingdom to share the stories and our efforts in the field to truly make a difference scientifically in the community and with the animals themselves. Our end goal is that we truly make a difference for those animals in the wild. The Disney Conservation Fund is proud to celebrate and protect the wildlife we share our planet with. From our experiences and dedication to animal care, to our work to save wildlife, and our support of conservation heroes, the Disney Conservation Fund is committed to ensuring a world where wildlife thrives and inspiring all of us to treasure and protect the magic of nature. We blend the love of nature and a respect for animals that Walt Disney always had himself with making dreams come true, getting people excited about nature and about being out in the wild. Every single one of us matters 
and has a role to play every single day we make a difference. Let's learn to live in peace and harmony between nations, cultures, religions, and between us and Mother Nature. At Disney, we're not just talking about helping the animals that share our planet. We're doing something about it. Join us by taking action in your own community to save wildlife, inspire action, and protect the planet. Dude, that was like cool. You guys inspired? Cool. All right, let's, let's get started now. Let's uh, bump some head, bump some noggin, flip some fin, and let's get your drawings and crush and squirt. We're gonna work with the little guy first. Little squirt, we're gonna begin up here in the top section and work on a little bitty guy. We have this uh, uh, shaped like a guitar pick. That's the shape for the head. And we're gonna put some uh, spaces in of the eyes. Well, shapes about like a circle. So we're gonna use these guidelines here to help our circle. Now the eyes are gonna bug out of the guitar pick shape. So I'd like you to begin to draw in the circle shape for the eye, yes. Even though we drew all the guidelines for you, you know, like the big huge shapes here in the large logo there. Yeah, you're welcome. But uh, some of these other shapes you're still gonna have to draw. A little bit of circle here for the eye is just one. And you can do that very easily, it fits right in there. Now I can draw in the shape for the other eye and just kind of park it over here. Another circle, of course, and she's looking right at us. Keep it kind of light at first. We can get those shapes drawn in there. Uh, sea turtles, when they're born, their vision is not that good. They're kind of nearsighted when they emerge from their uh, the clutch of eggs. And uh, they're making their way towards the ocean uh, to get to the, the safety of the seaweed and the currents to get protection. Uh, yeah, they can't see very well, which is one of the reasons why we encourage people to uh, uh, to turn the lights out at night if they're in the nesting grounds where the sea turtles are to make it easy for them to find their way towards the water. It's one of the things that you can do if you find yourself along the beach during the nesting season time of our sea turtle friends. Next is going to be the pupil itself. Let's draw a pupil in here. Now when they do get in the water, their vision is quickly corrected. The water compensates and allows them to see remarkably well. So there is our little circle shape and I'm even going to put in a reflection of light inside of the eye. You don't have to draw that if you don't want to, but you can. And kind of darken that pupil or a pupil so the eye has it in there. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side, draw another pupil. I'm looking right at us, a little circle shape fitting neatly in this spot. Draw those in there. A small reflection of light inside and then shade that as well. Then what we need to do is go ahead and darken the shape for the circles around those eyes. You may as well darken that in. There's the left one, and now here's the other. Pretty cool. Now, for the eyes, since he's looking over at us, uh, let's go ahead and put in some, another thing that you guys think about when you think of sea turtles. One that always crosses your mind, it's probably in the forefront of your mind right now. The next important thing is expressive eyebrows. That's what you're thinking of, right? No? Okay, well, if you think about it, animated characters usually do have expressive eyebrows in order to be able to have anthropomorphic features. The animators do that. Give them more human-like expressions and features so that we can uh, be able to understand them and, and sympathize with them. Without these uh, anthropomorphic features, we would probably not care as much for the characters. And since a little bitty guy like this has these big, huge eyes with expressive eyebrows, Makes them adorably, adorably cute. All right, so there's a little eyebrows. Now let's go ahead and close off the top shape of that head, which is that guitar pick. Darken that in. We can also work away on the bottom. The rest of the guitar pick shape is the head, but we're going to uh, just leave us a little bit of room at the bottom. The curve around the bottom here. Leave a little bit of room there for the neck. A little bit of space, and then I'll do the same thing on the other side as I close in this shape for the head. In there. And now since he's staring at us, we need to go ahead and draw the rest of his face. Now they do have a beak, uh, a nice little bitty serrated beak, but uh, here because he's looking right at us and he's so small, you don't really notice the beak as much. So we're going to draw in some little dimples. Little dimples in here and try to draw a smile with us as well. Uh, initially these dimples going to look like a uh, little bitty man chew mustache, but let's change that. Got the dimples in there. Now let's go ahead and draw the curve of the smile from one dimple to the other. 
It's got a cute little smile there. Yeah. And now we need to open that mouth up a little bit. So let's drop this open. Draw the other side, the bottom lip, if you will, inside the mouth, and shade it in. There we go. Shade that spot in. That's good. There's the shape of our head. Uh, and then uh, in a minute, we're going to add some other features in here to give him his personality, some of the little scaling that he has, and different colors of the scales. But not yet. Uh, next thing we're going to work on is going to be his neck. We're going to attach his head to the body by drawing a neck that kind of looks a little bit like one of those uh, solo cups. Plastic solo cups we try to encourage everyone not to use. Uh, as much as we uh, think that if you uh, live landlocked and where you live, those little plastic solo cups do make it to landfills, and landfills somehow eventually get to water, and that gets to the ocean where uh, sea turtles can find these and then eat them. Not unbeknownst to them, they're, they're not food, but it looks like little pieces of plastic get in the water. It looks like their favorite food, and that is jellyfish. We'll hit that more in a moment. Okay, got the neck kind of sketched in there. Now let's figure out how they're going to move. We need flippers. Now the flippers, if you had a chance, you saw a glimpse of that little bitty small uh, sea turtle and the big huge little flippers that you have. We're going to draw the same thing here for a squirt. We're going to start over here on the left side and pass the flipper uh, to his body. And the flipper on the left that we're drawing, I'm not going to, I'm going to curve off the bottom of this very, very lightly. It looks a little bit like uh, Captain America, uh, old school Captain America's she, uh, not shield, over his, the wings on his helmet. It's a little bit like that. That's how it starts. And where is it going to go? See these other two guidelines up here on the screen? That's what's going to help you draw it. Kind of curve over. Just draw the shape of our wing, or our flipper, which looks like old school Captain America's wings. Not MCU, current MCU version, because there the wings are kind of attached to the side of the helmet. And that's going to be lost in a lot of them. So only those of you who knew old school Cap would know about the shape of his wings sticking out of the side of his head. So there it is. If you're not familiar with that, then just take a look at the screen here. You can see a nice little shape that we're going to use. All right. That is for a wind fin. Let's draw the other fin. The other fin is going to be just a little lower. This one looks a little bit like the state of Florida. Here's our border with Georgia here at the top. Curve around. From St. Augustine there, we're going to take this all the way down to Miami. This big, long a jaunt all the way down. Past Water Hill, all the way down there. Now we get to the bottom where Miami is, we're going to curve back up again. And we're going to curve up a little bit to get to Fort Myers. Fort Myers is going to pull into a little bit where uh, right. Tampa is, yeah. You're getting there. You got, you got me. And then move a little higher, uh, head up the, up the inside of the coast and bring it right back into that body. So it kind of changes a little bit here, not quite Florida this part, but you get the idea. There's the flipper. So it looks a little bit like the state of Florida. Great. Now, the rest of the shape, oh, we need to add in the back flippers, the back end. Yeah, the front flippers, they're the ones that help the propulsion, while the back ones act as navigational rudders. So let's get those drawn here too. The back ones kind of shaped like uh, diamonds, uh, squished, flattened, a rounded diamonds, and that, that might be too much of a, a vague term, but here we go. Here's one of the flippers. So it's kind of diamond shaped with rounded edges, and there it is. There's the first one of these flippers, the back. And we'll draw another one right below. Here's the second one. And I'll just kind of let this one sweep up. Since this flipper is kind of pushed back a little further, we'll kind of round out the bottom. Of the flipper here to get that one drawn in. Here we go. Yep, great. Now we can go ahead and finish the shape of his shell. Uh, the shell. Now, our knowledge of sea turtles is uh, kind of limited because even though they've been doing research for the sea turtle for a while, they have a reasonably, lo reasonably long life lifespan. As far as we know, according to Crush, he says in the film he's lived, he's 150 years young. Yeah. So. Uh, a lot of our knowledge is only what we learn from the females. Because once these uh, sea turtles are hatched, the only ones that were ever returned to land again are the females to lay their eggs. The males, you never see them again. They never come back to land. So all of our knowledge is truly based on just what the females are, have shown us. Yep. So some of the documentation we've had shows that they've lived over, over 100 years. But most of them may have lived uh, an average of 60 to 80 years. All right. So this is the basic shape. 
Now we're going to figure out the distinction between the upper form of the shell and the lower form of the shell. And that's going to be a little curve here uh, by our lower flipper. I'm going to drag this up to the upper flipper, just kind of create this little line of a curve to kind of a, give us that distinction and separate the upper from the lower shell. There it is. And drag it down a little further, and that kind of gives us the edge. Now I'm going to go ahead and sink a lot where we'll have like a, his, his armpits and where the shell crosses underneath the bottom here. We have a little bit of room in those armpits. The shell kind of curves up to create a little piece right by uh, the neck. And then let it dip back down again on the other side. Now some of you, if you've seen a lot of cartoons, you've seen, you think that turtles can climb out of their shells and kind of push the shells around. No, no they cannot do that. Uh, that's a part of their body. The shell is the, is the spine, that's where, that's where it goes. And some of you know that other, other land turtles can pull their limbs inside their shell. That may be true of, of some land turtles, but uh, sea turtles, they're so muscular, they cannot, re uh, they cannot pull their limbs inside their body at all. And they can't do that. This next line is just a little division here. Remember, we're drawing a two-dimensional representation of a 3D character. So some concessions had to be made to make it look a little, uh, uh, a little more believable, when at least easier to draw because he has a whole bunch of other textures that we're not drawing on here because there's, there's no time. So there's a little, couple lines to help show us some distinction on the shell. I'm gonna draw a couple more lines below that to give us a, a few more little lines to show us where that would be for the shell. All right, typically he also has a little starburst pattern on his back, the back of the shell, a little starburst pattern. Um, if you know that, if you remember seeing it from the film, but in the merchandise, they changed that starburst pattern to looking like a little flower. And in the, t in the 2D version, that is also a flower. So that's what we're going to draw, is a little flower pattern, a little uh, daisy shape here on the top of his shell. Only partial in there, and then I'll draw another one higher up. Now, one of the reasons why they suggest that this could be, this is a flower, is because their destination, Crush and Squirt, when they meet uh, uh, Dory and Marlin, uh, they were heading towards, oh, they're using the EAC to head towards Hawaii. Yeah. The EAC, dude. There's a little pattern we're gonna stick on the shell. Next thing is this little bit of unique design that he has that singles him out. A little bit of uh, uh, showing of some of the scales that we're gonna show. So I'll put some little marks up here at the top of the head. And they don't have to be perfectly situated. They can be a little bigger than others. I'll put a little bubble over here on his neck, a little bit spot there, a little smaller one. Now, in, also in, indicate some of his, uh, uh, some distinctions of markings on his flippers. And these are not going to be the same size either. They can vary in shape and size. I'll put about five on each. So, and we'll just keep adding a few more of these. Now, the gender of a turtle is not determined by the male. The gender of the turtle, of the turtle horn, is also not determined by the female. Now you're probably asking yourself, well then how in the world do you determine, what determines the gender of a turtle? Does anyone here know what determines the gender of a turtle, a sea turtle? Do you know what it is? You do know what it is. What is it? Temperature. Temperature of what? Of the what? Of not the eggs so much, but you got the right idea. It's what's around the eggs. Sea turtles lay their eggs in sand. So the temperature of the sand. That's correct. Very good. Yeah, so if the temperature of the sand is exceptionally warm, then all those eggs are going to be female. If the temperature of the sand is going to be cooler, then all the eggs are male. So when that clutch, uh, the clutch of eggs is going to be pretty deep. So the sand at the top is warm, sand at the bottom is going to be a little cooler. And that's how you'll know which. So the clutch of eggs could have male and female eggs, just to give you some ideas, just because of the temperature of the sand. Or an easy way to remember this is to th think about what Crush said at Turtle Talk with Crush over at Epcot. If you guys have a had a chance to meet uh, Crush over there, he has a great little conversation with a lot of you people. And uh, he, he tells you the great little story about how do you determine the gender of, of the uh, sea turtles, how it's done? And, he, and this is the way he tells it to make it easier to understand. <clears throat> That's why dudes are cool and like chicks are totally high. Cha. And that's the way he says it, so there you go. So let's add a few more little markings on here for Crush, I mean for Squirt, and five. There you go, that's pretty good. Now let's switch to the other, uh, his daddy, right over here, let's go to Crush. But Crush, this is gonna be a little tricky. The eyes are probably the trickiest part of the entire drawing, guys. So I'm gonna suggest that you don't draw heavy for this. Draw light, and uh, let's, 
go ahead and draw the shape that looks like a balloon. Like a little balloon shape. So very lightly, guys, it's going to go above the guidelines. These guidelines are helpful to a degree, but they don't really help us too much. So let's get that shape. It looks like a little bit like a balloon. So lightly draw this, very lightly. Up and around, in balloon-like shape for the left eye. The right eye is not going to look like this. It's going to be different. The head's turned. We can show the transition, though. Over here on the other side, let me go ahead and draw a little mark to indicate the beginning of that, that beak, or, or the nose, if you will. Curve here. Curve. And then here we can add in the shape of the other eye, which is going to be a little different. Yes, it's going to uh, be a nice little arc that goes over. Again, draw this lightly. And the bottom of the eye over here dips down and curves out. So we have a nice weird looking oval shape here. So those are the shapes you need uh, for those eyes. Again, very different. Let's draw it lightly. And next we can go ahead and add in the details of the eyes. Let's go ahead and draw the bottom curve of those eyelids. Yes. Bottom curve is going to be like a little scoop. I'll curve this around to make sure the eye keeps its wide and its oval round like appearance. And then we just kind of bring them right back under. So this is our, our darker mark for that left eye. Little scoop. And we can even show a little bit of the bottom uh, crease of it here too. Just a little bit. Get that part of the eye drawn in. Next is the eyelid. He doesn't have this wide-eyed stare like his son does. He's kind of like laid back and cool and like totally chill. So we're going ahead and draw a little line here to indicate his eyelids. Not completely open. Just He's just chilling. He's happy to see his son next to him. So we're going to draw this curve for the eyelid. And then we're going to make it thicker and darker. Like, yeah. There we go. Curving that around to the other side. Now that it's drawn in, I'll go ahead and darken my curve of this left eye, including the creases of the eyelid above. Yeah. And there it is. Right. Next thing to add to the eye so it doesn't look like a com uh, complete blank stare is a pupil. He needs to be looking over at his son. So here it is. Nice little oval shape right inside. And I'm going to put another reflection of light, just like it did for the sun, in the pupil there and shade it in. Yes, let's shade that in. There, now you've got him looking over at his boy. All right, now let's switch eyes and do the other one. We'll do the little scooped shape the bottom curve first. Let's slide on down. Now the cool thing is about this, you don't have to worry about it being symmetrical. Yeah, symmetry is kind of out the window here with the head being turned. So you don't have to worry. It's not going to look even on both sides, and that's okay. The bottom curve of that eyelid. Now let's draw the top curve here for the eyelid. that's going to go just a little bit above that guideline. Turn this on just a little higher too. There we go. And now the other one curves this around. And drag it on over. Now if you make a mistake, it's okay. You can go over it with a with a, a better line. And you can kind of bury it underneath this thick eyelid. There you go. Got it. And then I'll go ahead and close off the rest of the eye on the right. And darken in my eyelid across the top, putting it where I want it, and inside. Finally, add in the last pupil. Here it is, over against the side here. With a little bitty circle for the reflection, and darken that as well. Yes, okay, here we go. All right, got it. Now let's work on his eyebrows. Okay, now you know the, you see uh, Squirt has a little bump on the top of his head, and you're wondering why Crush does not. Well, we're just going to ask because his head is tilted back. Crush has these expressive eyebrows, and his are protruding here at the top of our shape. So I'm going to draw a curvable bucket shape, and it shows the extension of those eyebrows going left and right. So this is the top piece right there. We can add in, if you think about these, if they, look like, if they look like eyelashes to you, that's fine, they're not. But add little eyelashes on either side, even though you are aware. But this is the size of the eyebrows. Go ahead and connect it to the top part of that brow there. See? And do the same thing going the other way. Up and over. And curve off the shape of that brow. Very good. 
All right, next has got to be those cheeks. Sure, we got to draw some cheeks in here. We'll pick it up from the left one and curve it a little wide. Then get inside the space and curve just a little bit lower. Now, cheek this, I'm making just a more finite line because I can. It's an easier curve to draw, which is not quite as complicated as those eyes that we drew earlier. And the right side's gonna curve just inside our oval. Drag it all the way down. Good stuff. All right, now he needs a smile. All right, we need a dimple over here. A nice little curve for the dimple. It's like a little C-shaped curve. Probably a little crooked. C-shaped curve. But then for the right side of the dimple, using the same guideline underneath the eyelid, draw another little bit of a dinky tiny curve to the edge of that part of the smile. Now we do have a beak to draw. The beak is gonna be uh, a nice little S curve shape here, uh, taking it right to the arc that goes through the circle, or through the uh, through the oval. It's not a very strong S curve, it's kind of a very narrow way S curve. And then for this left side, this is a fun curve to draw because you have to go below the guideline, above the guideline, and reconnect. This is a fun one to draw, so it's probably one of the most fun lines to draw the entire drawing because it's so cool. It's an S curve, nice and big and wavy. Now let's get the mouth open. The bottom of his mouth is gonna dip down a little bit to the left of our marker here, so I'll put a little bitty curve down there. It looks like a chin, but that's not a chin. And then from this right side, connect it to that lip. I just kind of drag it over and connect it to the lip. For the left side, it's another hill. A rolling hill that goes up and over, or you can stop, start at the top here and let it slope rolling down. Either way, there you go. That's the way we want. Now, inside the mouth, let's put in a tongue. He needs to have a little tongue in there. Yeah, one of the reasons why they think jellyfish is their favorite food, well, the jelly, jellyfish is their favorite food, when they see the plastics in the ocean, uh, they will uh, open their mouths and try to eat it because it looks like jellyfish, but they can't spit it out because of the design of their mouth. They don't have the ability to be able to spit things out. It has to go through their system, which is why one of the reasons why we encourage everyone uh, not to uh, use those single-use plastics. All right. I got the head taken care of. I'm gonna put in some little markings on top of his head, some little bitty, uh, uh, his little scales up here. So draw a few of those. They don't have to be perfectly aligned. They don't have to be symmetrical. We just kind of drop them in, give them a little personality, just like the sun has. Then, now we need to add in, let's get this up here, and add in his neck. Over here, for the left side of the head, just, uh, just on the left side of the cheek, we'll draw a little curve for the edge of the neck. And then for the right side, it's gonna stretch out a little longer because we have a little further to go. Just a little bit further to go. And swing this around. There you go, nice long, long arc. And there you go. We ended up putting little bubble shapes on the sun's neck. Let's put them on the dad's neck too. One, two, we'll put three this time. And all that's left to add now is the shell. So let's grab some shell, dude. Go ahead and darken that curve all the way up to the side of his head. Follow it around the other side of the head. And then we need to distinguish the top part of the shell. Yes, we can do that here. We can see that the top edge of the shell is kind of protruding a bit. So we're gonna go ahead and make this other curve on top of it. Let it be a little heavier, let it be a little darker. Right on top. And lastly, we need to show the distinction from the top edge of the shell and the bottom edge of the shell. Right here, we're gonna draw a nice little a line to create this little barrier to transition from the top to bottom. Here it is. I'm gonna do the same thing over here on the other side. Start by the neck and curve it on over. Let it get a little narrow as it curves around. Lastly, we need to show just some more uh, simple lines to show how this curves. Draw some more curves to show this is wrapping over. Just draw some lines in like a ladder and show how these are moving, let us see the form a little better, and do the same thing over here on the right. Typically, if this were the CGI character, you'd see a whole bunch of texture for uh, how the tortoise shell would look. All right, and there you go, guys. That is a quick lesson learning how to draw, crush, and square. Did you guys have fun? Yeah. All right, did your drawings turn out better than you thought they would? Yeah. I heard some no's out there. And, and adults, how did your drawings turn out? <laughs> 
Okay, not much response on that one. Very good. Okay, well, take a look over here in the far right. You're going to see some black and white images of our artists in the past. In the back there is Retta Scott and Mary Blair. Retta Scott's first female Disney animator. It's one of the nine old men who were the pioneers of animation were creating all those techniques that are going to be used for decades to come. There were female animators working right alongside them. Now, um, Frank, and, uh, Frank and Ollie over there, those are the two gentlemen in the middle. Those are two of the nine old men. You've probably heard of Frank and Ollie. If you don't know much about them, you can check them out on Disney+. Plus. Uh, there's a program there called Frank and Ollie. Simply enough, you can learn all about the contributions they made through the years. Hey, when it comes to animation, those two literally wrote the book on it. It's called The Illusion of Life. It's a book you can still get. Nice big coffee table book. has lots of illustrations to show you all their contributions. Head of it. That's a good drawing there. Very good. Yeah, I can see Crusher and Squirt. Nicely done. And head over here, ahead of them is one more guy. If you don't know who that dude is, I really can't help you. Uh, because his name is practically everywhere around this park. Yeah, there he is. There's Walt. And the lapboard that he's holding is not unlike the lapboard you guys are holding right now. You see them over there using, using uh, live animals as an inspiration for them to be able to draw. And we have the Disney Conservation Fund, so in a sense we did the same thing they did. That's right. For the past 25 minutes, you have been walking in the shoes of a Disney animator. So give yourselves a big round of applause. You guys did a great job down there. I do see some awesome drawings. Awesome. Sign your name that way everyone knows whose drawing this is. Congratulations. You are our latest batch of unpaid animation Disney interns. Okay. There you are. That's like totally cool. Okay. In just a few moments, the voiceover is going to be dismissing you from the animation experience. But that is not going to be your cue to exit. No, it is not. Uh, my buddies are very going to be dismissing you one group at a time. That's Tony and Don. We need Orlando. Tony, Orlando, and Don. That'd be great because that's a nice 70s. Never mind. They... <laughs> Over the head. Okay, never mind. Anyway, they'll be dismissing you one group at a time. Uh, do not uh, get up until they tell you it's okay. All we want back from you are those boards. The lap boards, they'll give you all the instructions for the boards. You're going to put those boards in the bucket over there with the hole towards the top. Okay, not the clip, the hole towards, like putting, putting a piece of bread in a toaster. The pencils, that's your souvenir. Take those with you. You can turn them into jewelry, have them bronze, have them shellac. Uh, frame them with your drawing because you drew a picture of a crush and squirt, two characters, and you didn't have an eraser. That's right, you should be very, very proud of yourselves, guys. You're very, very good. Okay, now, again, those drawings, those are yours. Take those home. That is, those are great souvenirs. That's the piece de resistance of your of your souvenir here. Uh, have those framed on the wall. People can be uh, have them admired for uh, days, weeks to come, even years to come, or you can put it on a dartboard and throw darts at it. I'm sure that'd be fun too. Guys, it was a pleasure sharing with you how to draw a crush and a squirt. We look forward to having you come back next time, and we'll see you all later. Bye bye everyone. Thank you all for joining us in the animation experience at Conservation Station. Please gather your personal belongings before exiting, and remember to take your artwork with you. We hope you enjoy the rest of your visit at Rafiki's Planet Watch, and the rest of your adventure here at Disney's Animal Kingdom.